It's a beautiful Iwagumi, Dave. I think it's the strongest Iwagumi that you've had in the store. We added them in here and immediately the green neons were out. Come out the transformation was unreal. It's interesting as well because they sometimes flower at the same time. And then there'll be times when they don't flower as much. It's almost uh, like they're, they're all sync. like Yeah, they're all connected, <laughs> aren't they? Hi everyone, George here. I'm with Dave from Aquarium Gardens. Hello. And we're going to check out these three beautiful aquascapes in some detail. This is the Aquascaper 1500, the 900, and the Loise Scaper Line 90. So uh, let us know which is your favourite uh, in the comments. And yeah, that's a good question to get people's interest. I think, I think most people are going to go for this one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the biggest, yeah. Biggest and boldest. Mm. Um, I might be a bit biased, this is looking nice. Looking lovely, yeah. Um, I'm really curious about the development of this one, Dave. This is the Iwagumi that you set up originally, what, three months ago? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, two and a half, three months. I did a deep dive video on the basically the hardscape layout mm. with you, didn't I? I'll leave a link to that. Yeah. That was like a really nice 4K production. Um, but there's been some significant changes in the planting hasn't there yeah so what happened what we planted originally was elatine hydropiper in the foreground mm -hmm. of course you can see now that we've completely changed that to eleocaris sicularis mini mm -hmm. uh, also known as eleocaris bacilla and um yeah what happened with the elatine it's it was a disaster basically um it all melted um, it? yeah so um we planted it uh went well for a couple of weeks um, started carpeting, almost fully carpeted the tank actually and we thought this is great, this is meant to be a difficult plant but it's going really well. After about two weeks we start to see little signs of, of leaves melting and patches sort of appearing, we can start seeing the substrate holes appearing, oh uh, what's going on? <laughs> there was 24 pots wasn't it of the one two grow? Yeah, it, it was heavily densely planted um, and we just wanted to get it grown in as quickly as possible for the shop so that's yeah. why we do that yeah. and it also massively helps against algae putting that much plant mass in. Yeah so. always always a big fan of planting heavily from the outset. Yeah, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. yeah and to be fair that has um, massively worked in this tank's favour we have very little algae despite the melting from the plant as well we still got very little algae um, because of the plant mass um so yeah we had to we i, I tried to rectify the issue mm -hmm. um i tried adding things like you know flourish advance ada fighting gear or sort of throwing everything at it that i could that i could think i was doing massive water changes making sure the co2 is really high yeah uh, replanting areas that had suffered okay and uh, it was still happening so okay so time to bite the bullet you removed it all i guess and then planted yeah the uh, mini hair grass instead yeah basically uprooted it all um siphoned out a top layer of soil just to get rid of any dirt that was under there yeah from the melting resoiled it with some soil powder from tropica mm -hmm. and then planted about another 20 pots or so of the hair grass interesting and the hair grass is carpeted super nicely isn't it really nice it, from, from then from then on it was plain sailing okay so it, uh, it really it, it grew in very quickly no issues so what do you think the issue was originally with the yellow tiny then? Any ideas? Um, I think, I think it's our water. I think, I don't know this for sure. It could be the fact that it's a soft water plant. Um, it's definitely a cool water plant. We okay. know that much. And okay. We were running the tank at about 19 or 20 degrees. So that was fine. Um, but of course we've got really hard water around here. Um, most plants are fine with that. They're cool with that. And we have no issues. Mm. Um, but I've never grown a team before. Mm -hmm and I think it could be that. Another um, thing yeah. uh, that uh, Sarah Casper and her husband from Tropica um, pointed out was that I planted it in quite big chunks initially um, and that could have... Is that Sarah Casper and Tommy? Yeah, Tommy, yes, yeah, Sarah, yeah. Sarah and Tommy. I've been to their, I've been to their house have you? a few times, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a really nice couple. Yeah, yeah. and their son Vigo as well. They're really, really helpful. They sent yeah. some emails and they sent some pictures of their tank um, and they'd successfully grown uh, Elatine Hydropiper. That's right, yeah. So they were pointing out differences from what I did to what they did. Okay. Um, obviously their water will be different to ours as well. Yeah. Um, they were running it at a cool temperature as well, but mm -hmm. one thing she pointed out was she planted it in much smaller uh, portions, smaller clumps. Okay. And I think that helps initially with the sort of carpeting and not suffocating itself. Yeah, it makes too sense. thick too quickly, okay. potentially why it melted. Again, we're just sort of guessing uh, at this point as well. Yeah. That, that's another theory. 
the thing is we're dealing with living systems and they're so complex aren't they it's, it's hard to probably put put any fault down to one yeah. one uh, environmental factors probably a few yeah. uh, few at play um, let's talk about this plant Dave I'm really impressed with the is this area cow on Vietnam yeah yeah so this is um, it's, a, it's probably my favorite plant at the moment um, just because it's so versatile okay <clears throat> complements the Elio Caris very well obviously both being spiky grassy type plants yeah um, similar shade of green as well it'll grow pretty much anywhere I've found so far whether it be in the middle under highlights or under the big rock in shade it'll grow very well there too so it's quite versatile I'm not sure what it's like under non CO2 condi conditions yet but mm -hmm. I have an inkling it might be okay wow not very uh, not very available though it only comes in in not, it's not a constant supply, is there? No, the supply that we get it from, it comes about once every four or five weeks. Okay. So I try and double up the order and get enough in for a while. So yeah. it's it, it's a rarer plant at the minute. I'm hoping Tropica will start producing it full time. Hopefully, yeah, because yeah, they did it in limited. Limited sure. edition, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is obviously a proven performer. It's not um, a lot of area cowlons tend to be more advanced, don't they? But this mm. seems to be a bit easier. It's really easy from my experience. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. It almost looks like um, a chorus or acarus, doesn't it? You know, it like does. a semi-aquatic. It almost doesn't look like it should be underwater. Yeah, it? yeah, I really it's like interesting. it. Yeah, yeah, interesting alternative. And does it carpet then, or does it grow from rosettes? How it grows it? from rosettes. It basically will send out a little plant next to it, and um, it doesn't send via runners or anything. It mm -hmm. just will form a new plant almost next to it. Beautiful. Yeah, I really like it. It's a beautiful like transition, isn't it, from the hair grass to the rock. Yeah, so it works really well. Yeah, and the stem plant in the back, Rotala green. Yeah, yeah classic. Yeah, it's it's almost growing on top of itself, laying itself now. It's yeah. getting quite thick. Get that, that beautiful cascading formation. Yeah, yeah, it's growing down that hill almost. Yeah, and you've changed the fish. I've noticed. So you've got black neons. Much better here. fish than black neons for an irigumi in my experience. Yeah. I've had them before, as yeah. you know, in the mosscape that we used to have. Yeah, I remember them. that well. Yeah, always very good in there. The green neons didn't go very well in here. They just they don't like the open space. I don't think they like a bit more cover. So yeah, we moved them to to your tank a few weeks ago. Yeah, we'll have a look at them in a minute. Mm. Let's just talk about the actual system for a little bit, shall we? So we've got the ADA Solar RGB with the shades on there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then the solar arm and the arm to go with it as well. Uh, we've got the Twin Star. Get a lot of our questions around these. So I'll uh, I'll try to explain how I think they work and see if you can see if you agree. Yeah. So yeah. basically, it produces oxygen. Yep. Tiny micro bubbles. We can actually override it, can't we, and have it. So this is um, basically working on electrolysis, I believe, splitting the H two O, and the byproduct is these oxygen nano bubbles, and then that gets blasted around the aquarium. And actually in increases the oxygen level slightly, I guess. Yeah, um, I see it as yeah, oxygen rich environment benefits the whole system. Yeah, so it's going to benefit the bacteria, yep. the filter bacteria, so you get more efficient conversion of ammonia. Yeah. So less chance of algae that way. And and your substrate as well. I you know more oxygen there is in the whole system, your substrate's another filter. Yeah. Especially in a system like this where roots are oxygenating the substrate well. Okay. And in turn healthier environment produces less algae yeah healthy for the fish the fish will thrive with more oxygen they're shrimp. always going to love it yeah um and, and is there a direct impact on algae then or do you think it's more of an indirect because of the process of the extra oxygen yeah i think it's indirect so the okay. process of extra oxygen it has an overall imp improvement in water quality and yeah. therefore reduction in algae that way exactly yeah yeah interesting I, I, I don't think you need it it must be worth saying you don't need this device to no. have a successful aquarium but it makes things easier i would say okay it's not like you know you need co2 for plant growth that's more of a must for us that's yeah. kind of a secondary it's like a um added bonus like a yeah you, you buy a car yeah. Now you can upgrade. You can have slight upgrades, can't you? This is like you know, alloy wheels, or exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good analogy. Central locking. So. Yeah, yeah. You don't need it. But I mean, you've got oxygen from easier. plants. You've got oxygen from surface vegetation. So yeah. you know, yeah. There's other ways you can get oxygen in the system as well. Filtration. You've got is it Oase or Eheim? This is an Oase on this tank. We do okay. do Eheims as well. Um, so it's Biomaster 600. Nice. 
and um, the bottle ran out this morning, so that's new, that's why the dials are on zero. Okay, just going to change that over today. So you've got no CAT on here at the moment. It's good for the video, though. <laughs> it is good for the video. Not good for algae. Not good for algae. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get the CAT on there. I'll uh, be all right for a couple of hours. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, we you uh, like these rags, don't you? Yeah, they're excellent actually. Um, they're our best seller. Yeah, um, they're they're kind of an upgrade. Uh, solid. Uh, reliable yeah. you never get any problems with them good I've got a couple at home in fact I've got one with the dual manifold so I can nice. I've got my two scope line 60s which I'll be able to run off the same bottle yes yeah, so which is great I'll do a video on that at some point if you've got two tanks next to each other it's yeah, perfect it saving yeah. Yeah, yeah just notice the shrimp mate they're beautiful yeah really red uh, these will be breathing in no time unless they probably a bit already are I guess yeah I think this one's buried over here I think yeah uh, lovely Cool, and uh, you you change the media, don't you? You put Seachem. We put Seachem, yeah. We in take the um, matrix and we take a lot of the sponge work out, yeah, and uh, just add, add some more biomedia, basically, and some uh, chemical Pure gen media as well. Yeah, pure gen. Wow, no wonder it's looking so clean. <laughs> it's a beautiful iwagumi, Dave. I think it's the strongest iwagumi that you've had in the store. Thanks, mate. I think uh, another thing worth pointing out in this iwagumi is why the rocks are so clean. Okay. There's a bit of algae on them, especially on the lower ones, but on the whole they're quite clean. Yeah, uh, you'd right. expect to get a lot of algae, wouldn't you? And you brush, would. Brushing them all the time. Yeah. Uh, but we're using a product called APT Fix um, every other week on them. So what do you do, brush that on? or? Uh, yeah, either brush it on or use a pipette or something and just um, just drip it all over. Okay. Leave, while you're doing a water so you do, change. Yeah, you do the water change. Yeah, yeah. I, I expose the rocks and then okay. um, paint it on, leave it for five, ten minutes or so. Yeah. And then a few days later, the algae's gone. Wow. Um, uh, otherwise, you just you're going to get algae on those rocks. Yeah, never so, Yeah, yeah. And I think it's nice to see a little bit of algae, like yeah. a, like a natural patina. Yeah, like this much, I don't really mind. Yeah, but I don't want to be scrubbing them all the time. So. Yeah, agreed. Okay, great. Well, that's a beautiful iwagumi. Let's move over to the Scaper Line ninety. When was the workshop? I can't remember. Oh, it's about seven or eight weeks ago. Now, it? Yeah, maybe a good couple of months or so. Maybe six. Yeah. yeah, it's grown in really well, isn't it? Yeah, oh, really quick and literally no issues. No issues at all. I'm obviously, incredibly happy about. I was slightly worried about issues from the wood because I've never used this wood before. It seems quite barky, um, but it didn't cause any algae issues. We had a little bit of mould as you normally do. Yeah. And what's the wood called? Centurion. Centurion wood. wood. That's from and then we use some. Um, of the nano kind of twigs as well, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, they're the, uh, it's called root twigs, I think they're called, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so w I won't go through each plant species, because there's so many, but yeah, it's just growing in really well. Really like the use of the hygrophila uh, polysperma rose rosinivig. Yeah, rosinivig, yes, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, We've added this, actually, since your workshop. That's Bulbitis deformis. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cause in my experience, this doesn't grow so well underwater. No, it's not much success. People have done it, but it's hard. Yeah. But yeah, growing in really nicely. We have a nice selection of plants. Crips, of course, Vica philandra. And the fish is interesting. So the the green neons mm -hmm. were in here. Yeah. And they were pretty, they weren't very happy, were they? They were kind of hiding away. Yeah. And they were actually hiding in here as well, weren't they? Yeah, they were all underneath the plant she wouldn't know there's any fish in there um we were going to add more and then we ariane who works here she was decommissioning her tank yeah and she had some rummy nose going and of course they're quite confident fish yeah. we added them in here and immediately the green neons were out. come out the yeah. transformation was unreal it's almost like the, um, they needed a dither fish to make them feel more secure yeah because if it's a species only then they're going to be the only one with any chance of being eaten. Yeah. So I think if they know there's another species in there, then it maybe dilutes that. Right, yeah. I yeah. guess, I don't know. Yeah. We should ask our friend Ty about that, they all know. Yeah, it worked perfectly. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and fun fact, um, Ariane's scape was actually featured in a recent is issue of Practical Fish Keeping magazine. Yeah, um, it looks amazing. So yeah, I was really happy with that. The photos looked really great, and uh, yeah, it was a real joy to write about. Because Ariane's like, uh, she's never really got into the hobby before she worked here, and then she's, mm producing beautiful aquascapes. So. She's come a long way with her aquascapes. Yeah. She's, a, she's a really good scaper and really good at growing plants. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And then uh, this is a different light. Obviously, it's not ADA. This, this is the Life Aqua Max Light. Yeah, Max Light or Master Pro. There's a few names for it. But yeah, this is also their sort of flagship light. Okay. I think they're bringing out a new version soon. But um, 
yeah it's really good for natural colors i'd mm -hmm. say and also good for penetration yeah see so graying this carpet really well yeah yeah lovely and same story of filter is it a waze this is a waze yeah yeah cool uh, so um, a life aqua regulator on this one actually okay. as well so Interesting. yeah awesome cool all right let's move over to the biggest last but not least this go. is the Aquascope of 1500. How long has this been set up now, Dave? Uh, this was November, so it's a good six months, six isn't months. it? Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's reaching its peak now, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yep, yep, um, it's filled out very well. Yeah, it's just, I don't know where to start. <laughs> it was a joint effort, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all of us that worked here, actually. We just kind of, um, I said a few things how I wanted it to look and uh, what materials, and then we just did it piece by piece, really. I, I started with one bit of wood, and then Ariane came in with another, and then yeah. Tom came in, and it just kind of, yeah, it came together like that really that's really great yeah it was it was fun it was really fun yeah that's cool and you got your team like you say teamwork yeah it's like a team building exercise and it probably would if it was yeah it is like team building yeah. exercise like we were all like pumped by the end of it yeah so. yeah because yeah, everyone's got their own roles normally within the store you know people are packing and yeah. stuff for orders but to actually get their hands wet literally and well, definitely get in there and creating something for the store and then we came back a couple of weeks later and all planted it together and that was another so it's really fun Cool. Yes. I mean, there's so many different plants in here. It's got some. Yeah, I think the standout one's probably the Montevidensis at the back. Yeah. Adds a lot of um, depth because it's, it's beautiful, so small. Isn't it? Yeah, that's great. And you've got various Rotalas in the back. Um, got Myrophyllum Guyana, is that? Yeah, yeah, lovely little oh, fluffy really plant. Great, it's yeah. quite a slow grower, actually. For yeah, standout. I'm growing that in one of my scaper lines at home, actually. And you've got some Rotala Hra, is it? Uh, yeah, I think it's Hra and orange juice, I believe. Uh -huh. I like using the different rotolas together mm. to get this nice uh, like natural blend of colours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the harlequins are an amazing choice for this, aren't they? Yeah, they just they look great. Everyone, they're, they're you know bread and butter fish, aren't they? But yeah, you know, when right. in a tank like this, they look yeah, classic, beautiful. classic for a reason. Mm. And it's a different book of philandrus. Yeah, we've got some kedigang. We've got wavy green. We've got Thea, Lamande, there's quite a few. Yeah, a lot of them flowering as well. Yeah. I always find it interesting when they're fully submerged plant flowers, because there's no chance of it ever no. being propagated. So it, it must think it, and the, the plants don't think, I guess, but it must assume, it must be conditioned to, to think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it must basically. It, it thinks it's in, in air. Yeah. Otherwise, why would it be producing flowers? But I guess if the CO2 levels are high enough that might be the trigger yeah it's interesting as well because they sometimes flower at the same time and yeah. then there'll be times when they don't flower as much it's almost uh, like they're, they're all like, yeah they're all connected <laughs> aren't they that's really interesting yeah there's some plants that are growing on here that aren't actually strictly epiphyte plants like the hemianthus yeah calatricoides cuba yeah I, I think it I think it's becoming more commonplace now to use plants attached to decor, which we don't normally think about. Crips, I remember you doing crips a while ago. I've started to do that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, any as long as it's got access to nutrients, then it's going to grow anywhere. Yeah, isn't uh, it? I mean, especially if you're using CO2 and you're fertilising the water column. Yeah. Then this doesn't need any substrate really to get its food. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's a beautiful layout, Dave. How much time are you spending maintaining these then every week? Uh, on average, this tank probably an hour and a half a week. And okay, then today I'll be doing a massive trim. So it'll be more like a three hour job today. So. Yeah. Are you going to uproot all of the stems? Yeah, take them all out, um, cut off the tops of the good portion because the lower portion's really old now. Yeah. We'll uh, siphon off a layer of soil, uh, put a new layer down, and okay. then plant healthy tops again. Okay. Is that, is that a technique you do every every few months or so for stems? Is yeah, it? normally it'd be about four or five months. This has been about six, so it's a bit yeah, overdue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did it in Pavel's as well recently, and yeah. just needs it. We did it in Tom's most recently, actually. Yeah, those have just been planted fresh into some new soil. Oh yeah, I did a quick. Um, I sort of took the Mickey out of Tom's scape a while ago in the vlog, didn't I? Tom's it, mess, I called it. Was it was really overgrown. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it e it's easily it's easily easy to sort out. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's great now. We changed the Glossa Stigma to Monte Carlo as yeah, well. Yeah, a bit more sustainable. Yeah. And then this is Steve's layout that he needs to do, his plant up. Yeah, he's, he was going to plant it this Sunday, but we've been busy. Okay. But um, yeah, that's, that's ready to be planted. Looking oh, good. Awesome. 
All right, mate, we'll leave it there, mate. Thank you so much, as always. I know you're a busy guy. I'll leave you to maintain these stem plants. <laughs> right. yeah, that's cool. Thanks, Dave. And yeah. um, how can people find you? Uh, online, aquariumgardens.co.uk, yeah. social media, Facebook and Instagram, some YouTube tutorials you can look at as well. Cool. And, of course, the physical shop based in Huntingdon. Yeah, I'll leave links to those in the description. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to let us know what your favourite is out of these three. The Aquascaper 1500 the Iwagumi or the Scaper Line 90. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. See you on the next one. Thanks, Dave.